Over the past month, I've been learning how to pick the lock on these police-grade handcuffs. In just a few moments, I'm gonna be handcuffed to this solid steel frame, and I'll have exactly 90 seconds to free myself before the claw on this robotic arm undoes my pants, exposing me to an audience of children. <laughs> what you're gonna see tonight is 100% real. Welcome to Nathan For You. This is the Claw of Shame. <laughs> Why is this a magic show now? <laughs> I booked a training session with escape master Mark Pascal. I was hoping to have him as an official advisor on the escape. I don't know, it's moving a little bit out of my field. I guess I could say you're a consultant on the escape? I don't know, I'll have to get back to you. <laughs> as good as done. I appreciate it, but what I'm saying is I will get back to you. You'll get back to me about the credit? Yeah. Well, we'll just put it in anyways. <laughs> So if I don't escape in 90 seconds, I'll be exposed to some people, adults or something, I don't know. Children, adults. Is children better? Interesting question. <laughs> John suggested making custom designed pants with loops that would make it easier for the robot to remove them. Hired a tailor to make the pants to John's specifications. I borrowed a pair of his underwear so he could pull down my pants all the way without seeing my penis. The pants. <laughs> I'm trying not to look. <laughs> Return to real FX to find the robot acting unpredictably. <laughs> to make matters worse, I found out that the robot whose precision would determine my fate ran on Windows 95. <laughs> We're just moments away from the escape, and tonight I cannot risk failure. But one thing I've learned over the years is that you can't be afraid of failing. I really can't see how this is supposed to pay off in a comedic way. Besides the risk to me, there are 10 innocent children participating in tonight's event, and I don't take that lightly. Are they even allowed to be up this late? We're gonna be blurring all your faces so you don't have to worry about, you know, coworkers being like, why did you let your kid do that for a hundred dollars, you know, or... <laughs> you can clearly see their faces. <laughs> Nathan is stepping over to a laptop where his mom and dad are standing by via Skype, and they don't know what Nathan has planned tonight, but he wanted to hear their voices before stepping to the stage. <laughs> before going to prison. <laughs> now the robot going to that, that fly. The fly is down. <laughs> under 50 seconds and he's dropped the pick. Did it catch? Couple seconds left, oh no. We are seeing pubic hair, but he has escaped. And you can see the relief on his face. <laughs> I would have been sort of offended if, it, if his underwear fell down, but not that much. <laughs> I wonder what gave them the idea to do this episode. It had nothing to do with what the show is actually about. It wasn't overly funny either. Did they just run out of material? Or did some of their normal business episodes not turn out as intended? Or did they lose footage? Couldn't they use footage due to something? Or was it merely a promotional episode to promote the show?